Is Europe better than America? Obviously, a lot of people have asked this question over the years, and I just got back from a trip to Italy and France. So, David, maybe I'll have the answer. Oh, you saw how we do things. You saw the difference, and now you are <laughs> jealous of how we recycle. You know, contrary to what we think, David, actually, French people don't talk quite like that, but Pepe Le Pew does. Uh, bonjour, bonjour, merci, merci. Uh, but anyways, David, um, I just got back from a trip to Italy and France uh, with Mabu. But anyways, uh, I noticed some things that were different about Europe, some that were better and some that were just different that I don't understand. Do you want me to tell you about it? Tell me about it because uh, I've been to Brussels. That's the, the, the time that I've spent in Europe, but I have yet to go to you know, France or Italia. Yeah, well, let me just tell you about some of these details, guys. I have a list. Here are 11 things that I noticed about Europe, and some of them are pretty cool. And I would say, like, I'm kind of wondering, can America adopt some of these things or not? Oh, you, uh, you Americans, you come for, like, little vacation. You think you know everything, huh? <laughs> you think you're an expert now? No, that is exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so, number one, guys, recycling is big here. It is way bigger than it is in America. In America, we kind of have this pseudo-recycling culture, right? Right? But well, now isn't starting- it because it got discovered that recycling in America is actually fake? Yeah. So, uh, guys, I cannot speak on how real it is in Europe, but I will tell you this. They think about it a lot more. So, first off, let me talk to you about these bottle caps. Anybody who's been to Europe knows they got these flip caps that use less plastic and the cap is connected to it. You mean like a sauce cap? Yes. So, that the ca- the cap does not... Uh, separate from the bottle. It's easier to recycle. You don't lose the cap. Although I will say the spout of it is a lot shorter and smaller, therefore making it a little bit harder to drink. Well, you know, that's why I'm glad we don't do that because it would make it more difficult for me. Right. Uh, But that's one of the things that's different. Um, And sometimes, I'm not going to lie, the flip cap does kind of scratch the top of your mouth. But in a convenience aspect, I understand. Yo, what is this machine that looks like it's out of Fallout? Like, it yeah. looks almost post-apocalyptic uh, steampunk. Oh, well, David, that's just a recycling bin that they have on the street of Paris. So, in Paris, they have these big recycling bins with these holes that you throw bottles into. But it only it's- fits a bottle. Yeah, it's this only- This is like a, a plastic bottle glory hole. Yes, yeah. Dude, in America, these things would get violated so quickly, guys. I don't even want to get graphic, but let me just tell you, they are noticeable. So, what I notice in Europe is that these things, they kind of look ugly, but then, like, they'll just have it. So, Paris is a beautiful city, but then they kind of have these weird, ugly things sitting around, which I'm going to get to. But anyways, this big recycling bin, they would just not have this in America. This hole would totally get just abused. Dude, in America, Andrew, you can't even get people to throw the trash in the regular trash can. Yes. Let alone separate it out. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, Andrew, in East Asia, you have to separate your plastics, your trash, food disposables, mm. and um, your paper. Yes. In, in Japan, Taiwan, you have to be hyper i mean you know in america we have recycling bins away from the trash but you know people don't really care but anyways yeah there's just a lot of different things that i saw for recycling guys so they're really trying to minimize plastic one thing that did annoy me though david is this picture here at mcdonald's or starbucks or pretty much anything that you're going to get a fountain cup of drink there is no plastic top you know that plastic lid that you snap on it's paper And so everything being paper, the straws paper, I'm not going to lie, things get soggy. So that's not something I love. Like, you know, the experiences isn't as good, but I'm not going to lie. It's better for the environment. But you know, that is how we run our society. Like you must uh, give up some personal enjoyment or personal convenience, uh, obviously for the good of the ecosystem. (laughs) And look at this little picture of this turtle that's like getting killed by this plastic cup. I thought that's hilarious. They just wouldn't have that cartoon in America. Right. Oh, by the way, guys, don't make me talk to you and show you a picture of the cigarette packs. Oh, they're gruesome. Because you know how they show like the the bat, like the dead baby on the- Oh, right. They show like a depleted, atrophied fetus, right? Yeah. Uh, Moving on, Andrew. What's next? All right. Number two, David, something that you'll very notice at the grocery stores, the Fran Prix, the Mono Prix, the uh, Le Lurk or the Car Fours. They do not refrigerate a lot of their produce. This is weird to me. The eggs just sit out there at room temperature. So this is shocking because in America, I grew up, just everything's refrigerated. Uh, The eggs are refrigerated. Obviously, yogurt has to be refrigerated. But like the eggs are just sitting out there. And I guess, David, scientifically speaking, it's okay because in Europe, they have very strict standards. They do not wash the outside of the eggs, therefore removing, removing this cuticle 
that actually allows the shell to be at room temperature and not get spoiled. Yeah, so you're saying the eggs still got the chicken butt juice on them. <laughs> so I don't know if it's the placenta or whatever it is, but the eggs still have a covering on it, therefore allowing it to sit at room temperature and it doesn't spoil, which is Bro. interesting because in America, we refrigerate That, that is interesting because I guess uh, I never even thought of that because in, na- in nature, the eggs, they just sit at room temperature too like obviously animals they don't have access to refrigeration yeah but they they don't go put the eggs in the snow afterwards yeah exactly so and then also the vegetables guys they do not sit under these big like uh misty like sprays like you don't spray a lot of water on it because actually in america i learned after going to europe i had to google this that actually america does that more for marketing reasons to make the veggies look fresh it's actually not good for the veggies veggies will rot quicker if they're wet all the time that makes sense, right? We know right, that from right, sitting right. in the fridge. And I, I do think that there's a push on the internet and YouTube right now, or TikTok, et cetera, where I see a lot of people criticize American industrialized, commercialized food practices. Yes. And guys. they have a lot less of those, even in, uh, from what I could tell, in Canada, even less than America. Yeah. And I'll Canada's tell you this, more French. Europe, man, they definitely use less, I don't want to say zero, but less pesticides and hormones in their Fruits and veggies, for sure. That's probably why you guys are so violent. You know, you always result <laughs> to violence. And pesticides it gets yeah. in your brain and it'll fix your patterns. Yeah, you know, America, they, they like to uh, have war, you know. Um, public bathrooms and water fountains. This is something I noticed. I mean, they kind of have some public restrooms in certain cities out here. But these are actually still well kept. And they have public drinking fountains, which is something that you just don't see in America anymore. I knew of them when we were growing up, but now nobody's going to touch them. But I'll tell you this. Well, David, crackheads drink out of them. Yeah, they do the bird bath too. You know, people wash themselves, all that stuff. But ultimately, David, guess what? There's some drinking fountains that have sparkling water. For real? In Paris. Did you drink out of it? No, I miss those ones. But I read that there's about 50 of them around the city. <laughs> Yo, free sparkling water that you got to pay Cause, for Perrier at the Cause, at the cause you know, sparkling water, this is like where sparkling water comes from is like France. Like they love sparkling water. They love... The bubbles. Yo, do you think that they would put sparkling water in their bidets? Dude, that moves that moves on to my next point, David. Bidets. Bidets are everywhere. And not just bidets. They look like a, an entirely separate little sink toilet next to your toilet. And at first, I didn't really know how to use it. So I tried to use it. But the blast was so strong. I swear to God, it just sprayed little bits of poop everywhere. That's, yo, that's hilarious. Did you Google it or did, what'd you do? Like, well, I turned it down and then like, I, but then so I, you're saying you think the Japanese version where it's like the Toto comes out of the bottom and then takes care of you. The, the, the advanced toilet seat is superior to this like separate. Yeah. Superior for washing your butt for sure. But cause your butt doesn't need a strong blast. I guess people also wash their feet in this stuff and too, but then why would you want to wash your foot also in the same sink that you take a poop? In? Anyways, guys, I, it's confusing. I don't really understand this one. All right, well, we'll pop up a chart right here. Number five, Andrew, you said the facades during construction are well-designed. No, because the facades of the buildings look like the buildings. So this is different that you don't really see in America because when people put up a, a facade for construction, it's just like a green, like yellow, like construction. Maybe put a sign on it, just yeah, like build well. Maybe it's like green, dark green. It's like a dark green net. But here they put in the time... Because the buildings are so historical and, you know, so beautiful and, and, and architecturally designed from 1450 or whatever, they make the facade look like the building right, so that right. you don't miss out, really. It doesn't look ugly. So you're saying, like, even construction needs to be aesthetic? Yeah. The aesthetics are, but, import, are important. <laughs> but here's what's not aesthetic. Point number six are these clear trash bags that are everywhere in the city. So it's funny because Paris has such beautiful buildings, but on the street, they have these really ugly clear trash bags and even in the airport, which is different, David, because there's no trash can holding it. You just see the bag of trash and sometimes it looks like a bag of shat. Right. And is this designed to be uh, against terrorism or is this just a cost saving measure? Because obviously this does look different. I did notice, I believe in Times Square they use these clear trash cans. Okay, so they're starting to do them in America. Well, guess what, guys? Uh, Apparently, they do this partially because there was, uh, in 2015, they had some uh, trash can bomb terrorism. So that was also part of the reason why they make it clear so that you can see, 
I guess, a bomb inside of the trash can. Right, right. I so, guess it's it's not very aesthetic, but honestly, it does keep everybody more safe. And it is interesting to see what other people threw away. It is interesting. I'm just saying those bags would get slit open and ripped open in America so quick and dragged across the street. Oh, man, nah, nah. People would go through it to try to get the cans, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I guess for can collectors, you know, they, they'll be able to see how many cans are in the trash can so they don't have to pick through all of them. Got the eagle eye. Yeah. So, point number seven, public transportation, man. Uh, obviously, the Paris... Uh, subway system is a lot newer than the New York one, so uh, with no surprise, it's a lot better, a lot simpler. I heard, though, that actually Paris had the first one in the entire world before New York did, just by a few years. And then they probably updated it, yeah. They, they've done a better job of uh, keeping up with the times. The New York one still looks like it's from 100 years ago. Yes, yes. So this Paris one is fire. It's super easy. And then, like, these bus stops, so this picture is in france with the 39 95 96 and then this other photo with the champagne bottle that someone left over which is so italian i guess um they uh that's in italy and basically these little screens tell you how many minutes until the bus comes david right what do you think about these doors where you there's no way you can hop it without paying the fare right this makes it impossible for you to turnstile hop yeah it, i don't know if it's impossible you could jump over it but it makes it hard there's this big metal door that you have to open with your hand uh and break through it's almost like you have to like bolt like you have to like bulldoze through it after you go through the turnstile so i think it's to stop fare jumpers because it's obvious you can't really jump through it Right, and you said it's more expensive as well. Yeah, yeah. It's about uh, almost four euros a ride, which is a little bit more than four dollars. So, so I guess in your sense, like, is this better because it's a more secure system B between the trash cans and the uh, preventing people from stealing subway fares? This is better. Yeah, obviously it's a lot cleaner and there's a hell of policemen and soldiers everywhere, honestly. But um yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about making the price all extra expensive, but I, I think obviously we all know New York could do a little bit better. Um, yeah, if you want to smash this window on this train out of an emergency, you have to take this hammer and become like Thor and smash. I just think it's funny. Like in America, they would never have like a little, someone would take this and use it as a weapon, man. Well, someone would smash that window out with, so quick. Right, just for fun. Uh, surveillance cameras everywhere, and they're really not shy about it. They're super in your face, and they even have a lot of signage that says you're being surveilled. And honestly, I think it is because of the threat of terrorism. Paris is always in threat because it's closer to where terrorists come from. So uh, basically, they have like more, I guess, like measures in place to stop terrorism or to point it out, you know, to, to deter terrorism. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think in America, there's a lot of like bulbs that they have as the security camera, but not ones that security cameras that are so blatant. Right? Yeah, they're just like, yeah, watching you. But you know, when you go to uh, other countries, I know like London was like that. East Asia, there's cameras like everywhere. Yeah, cameras everywhere. Uh, number nine, elevators and hotel rooms are tiny in Paris. They're tiny, guys. Elevators in Europe are like three by three, two so, by two. So there's like two people max. Bro, that's just, just two people and like two small luggages. That's max that it can fit. Uh, the, the, yeah, so just get used to that. Uh, expect that. People hang out outside differently. I don't know. People just sit down. There's some stores that even have like outdoor seating parts of their, to, for people to smoke because smoking's still really big out there. Oh, man. And they got like the satin seat cushions too. Yeah. That's insane. Well, that, that's on a luxury kind of like, you know, uh, it's like a Soho. So street. you're saying it's like uh, Ame Leon Dore, Kith vibes everywhere. Yes, man. It really looks like Soho all in a lot of places. Um, but yeah, they still have homeless people. But the homeless people, I didn't see any like unhoused zombie looking people that were off on the Fenny and the Heroi. You know no, what off I mean? The Fetty Wap? Yeah, off the Fetty Wap or off the Heron. Like, you know, in America, obviously, those are big problems. But out there, they definitely have their little, like, crazy people shouting on the street and, like, poor people for sure or, like, unhoused people. But, uh, no, it's not as bad. Anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap this up with the last point, food culture. Uh, I just see women walking around with baguettes in their arms. I saw it, like, three, four times. You mean, like, a long baguette? A long baguette. Dude, these baguettes are, like, 14, 15 inches. You They're mean, just like, a Trader Joe's tote bag? Yeah. Or, like... No, it's like, I think it's like a fashion statement. I think it's cool. Like, look at this girl. She looks like a model. Uh, sorry, I took a picture of her. I just had to. Um, they just leave food out, like at bakeries and stuff. Like, it just won't be covered. It'll just be out, like, next to you that the food that they sell, like a cake, like a, like a coffee cake will just be, like, right next to the register. 
and that's it. And they just slice a piece off for you're you. You're saying in America, not only would there be a sneeze guard, but there would maybe an additional thing on yeah, top. Yeah, like this is at the airport. They're just selling slices of cheesecake. You would just take a plate. So your hand could reach in there and just grab the, the cheesecake and then just eat it. But David, why would you do that? Why would anybody want to grab the food? But see, see, but that's because we don't have the mind of Americans. Yeah. Americans would yeah. go in there and do all types of different American. crazy things. Yes, American, for sure. Uh, foie gras store, obviously, foie gras is not that big in America. Uh, actually, illegal in a lot of places in America yeah. due to uh, animal cruelty. Right? Oh. oh, rotisserie chicken is big out there, David. You'd love it because you know we 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 get the baked chickens at the grocery store and at Costco, but here they literally got just roast chicken legs off the street. You can get chicken and potatoes at your friend pre. You can get, they're, they're just roasting p chickens just out like a street food. So you're saying basically rotisseries is almost like uh, taco here or something yeah, well like that's that. where it comes from rotisserie chicken rotisserie is what where, where language do you think that is that sauce that's yeah the f uh i had obviously in italy guys they call dumplings ravioli which is the italian term for dumplings and then noodles are called um tagliatelle so like anytime they're trying to describe chinese food it's like tagliatelle de chinese right. or this ravioli de chinese i see this jajangmyeon being called spaghetti di korea yeah spaghetti di korea uh, which is funny because jajangmyeon originally is obviously chinese but because did you get it was it the chinese style or the korean style i don't know based off the picture that looks more chinese yo tell me about this rojamo right here this xian oh man pork the rojamo is are really good out there guys uh there's certain like I, I've, I've, since I've been back, I've been talking to some people about Chinese food in Italy and Paris, and some people said that they really liked it and they think it's better than New York. Hot take. I don't see how it could possibly be, but certain things are better. I think that anything that involves bread in France is better. I think the bun mies are the bread is definitely better because they're used. The standard is higher. You know what I mean? So anyways, yeah, I mean, guys. Yeah, they have different, they have a higher standard yeah. for like anything involving cheese. I noticed you're eating a cheese and ham sandwich over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these, look at how much meat is in these sandwiches that the air, uh, that the airplane's giving me. The, the bread was really good, but honestly, this would not be an acceptable sandwich by an American standard. Look, that's a slice of cucumber. Mm. But which was city was more organized uh, or which country was more organized, France or Italy? Well, I went to Florence and Paris. So Paris is a big city. Florence is actually a small historical town so it's hard to uh, compare the two but i will say this florence for how small it was was very well organized with the public transportation obviously it didn't have a subway system but the public transportation the bus system was very advanced they give you the minute of when a they have an lcd screen uh, and it's not cracked no one's smashing it you know things like that so in europe it's a very interesting mixture of high tech 2024 stuff and keeping the history so the does it feel more like canada please for the people who are not that like you to go into europe all the time uh wh what's it like is it i'm assuming no. it's like can because canada reminds me of that yeah but the thing is structurally canada doesn't have such old buildings but i would say i haven't been to montreal but montreal is more french than toronto is so i would say it's probably more the attitude and vibe is probably more similar to montreal people were generally nice i don't know when they say oh the french are assholes or whatever i'm like i don't know if you say bonjour merci merci like people were pretty cool so do you think the people who came up with the man the french are assholes they were going over there and going hello pierre i need some directions well and I then the guy was like huh no English. I don't want to speak with you. I think that you, uh, France is a lot more English friendly in the past 15 years, obviously. So I don't know. I mean, Paris is a big city. They know they, they can speak some English, man. So anyways, guys, uh, that's pretty much my list of things that are different in Europe. Does that make Europe better? There's certain things that Europe does better for sure. They also got other things they have to consider a lot. So you guys let me know which one of these things that you think America should adopt. Should America stop refrigerating their eggs? Yeah, I think that they definitely are not as pro-corporation or industrial complex, like the egg industrial complex or whatever like that. And um, I think there's just like pros and cons to those things, yeah. right? Like, clearly, I, from what I can tell and all the information, everything that you said, it pretty much lines up with... I, I didn't have a lot of those visuals that you just showed in my mind of the... Especially of the, uh, you know, the, the recycling can machines and things like that. But, like, definitely, like, it seems like ideology-wise, it lines up. They, they have a different pattern of thinking over there. I think there are certain patterns of thinking or things that 
maybe thinking wise that Europe does that I think America should take some note off. And I think this is the good thing about being in America, guys. America could potentially take the best ideas from all these other places and try to implement them in America. But sometimes in America, it's hard to get things done because there's all this bureaucracy and there's all these people disagreeing. Well, also the people, the citizen population in America is super crazy. Yeah. Listen, guys, we can have a lot of the stuff Europe has and also guns. All right? That's fine. I'm not... <laughs> All right, anyway, guys, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Have you been to Europe? Which one of these things do you think makes sense for America? But honestly, you know, America in the public streets, America can't have a lot of nice things right now. So anyways, let us know what you think. Um, and and you know what I below. noticed, though? A lot of things, Andrew. Did you know Starbucks was created based off Italian coffee culture? So yes. there is a lot of things in America. Do, did you see the home root of it? Yeah, espressos. Yeah, I had espresso. Espressos are cheap. No, but I'm saying a lot of like things that we view as in America, like pizza and stuff, it all comes from over there originally, yes, but yes. we don't really hold it to the original standard. No, I mean, the root of a lot of stuff, like rotisserie chicken, right? We just assume that's American, but that's from there. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, pizza, you got all these other things, these all these breads. French fries are from Belgium, right? Yeah, all the frites and everything. So yeah, I mean, it's it was cool to see the root of a lot of actually things that influenced America. You know, so, uh, yeah, and even the words. I, I feel like Asians would rather move to America, though. Yeah, yeah, I think America is worth it given the opportunity, but I think there's, we should always be looking at things that we could be doing better. That's all I'm saying. Wow, you gained a new perspective by coming across the pond. All right, you guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. I apologize for the accent. I know my French accent's not very good. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.